What's up, everybody? Welcome to Fuck Your Feelings, the greatest podcast to ever exist, man. We got a phenomenal, phenomenal <laughs> episode. Y'all have no clue what I've been through to get this podcast started today. Devil is busy. He's a liar. <laughs> liar. Hey, man, this is a this is a very chocolatey episode. <laughs> <laughs> What I what I'm looking at, y'all. This is a very chocolatey episode, man. Um, yo, we got Kevin Tate. That's right. We got Trey Elliott. We got John C. Dixon. You do you go by your last name too? Why does everybody ask that? You know, it don't matter. Either way, I'm I'm the same person. I feel like you just a John C. I I, yeah. I actually dropped Dixon for a minute, and then my mom was like, I mean, I'm still a Dixon because my dad died, and I don't want to be related to none of my siblings. Oh, okay. So I was like. Y'all didn't, y'all didn't have a good relationship with your daddy? I mean, yo, me and my dad had the best relationship, but he's dead. So I don't got to be connected to nothing that's connected to him no more. But then my mother was like, what about me? And I was like, okay, I'll, I'll bring it back. The fuck? <laughs> a, like that was a, deep. Yeah, it sounds like there's Shit. a lot of... <laughs> Dark. Damn. That, right, yeah. right. So undercover stuff. I just uh, need to go to therapy. Well, about. guess what? Yesterday we started off with rape. So I mean... Oh, oh wow. my God. Wow. Wow. Sheesh. So this ain't shit. This is way better. Man, how y'all doing, man? What, what, what the fuck y'all, what y'all been up to? I started this podcast, man, to connect with comedians and, and, and holler at y'all and us kick it and talk shit. Listen, man, I'm good, man. I know I'm in the right place at the right time. I'm on the motherfucker Fuck Your Feelings podcast. <laughs> <laughs> the second best fuck. The second best podcast. Damn, who number one? Nigga, my shit. Uh, Kevin's Zodiac oh, show. Nigga, it's the Fuck show. Your Feelings show. So yeah. nobody gives that shit. I like it. I thought hey, that was dope, but I'm glad you having me, though. I appreciate no it. No doubt, bro. No doubt, bro. Appreciate but you still doing yours via Zoom? Um, yeah, no, I still do it. I take it off and put it on my my YouTube. So I still do it live. On um, IG. On IG. And put it over to my YouTube. Yeah. Nice, Trey, man. what the fuck are you doing? Oh, man. Living <laughs> reckless and ill-advised. You know my hey. saying. Nah, man. Right now, you know, I'm touring right now with Tony. Tony Rock. I'm doing the Rock the Mic tour with him. How that's going? Oh, shit. This is bananas, How much pussy you getting out there? Oh, man. Listen. <laughs> None. 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 Yeah, well, same amount he get here. Yeah, because it's... <laughs> Cause you know, you know, I'm in something now, man. So it's oh, just okay. like, so you gotta I, I, be, I, I be, I be chilling, you know, even though she don't think I do. <laughs> so I got lie now. You still, <laughs> fuck your feelings, <laughs> fuck your everything, fuck up your relationship. Uh, I'm just talking shit. Yeah, talking yeah. Shit. He's a yeah. faithful. He's a good man. Yeah, but now nah, we, uh, this shit is going dope, man. I, to be honest, I'm gonna put this out there. I don't feel like there's nobody hotter than our than our shit right now than, than the Rock the Mic tour. Okay. You know what I mean? Me and Tone, we, you know, the reviews come in. You know, we we out there blazing the stages. I'm trying to think. Now I love Tony. I, yeah. I I don't know if I've ever told him this, but when I first moved to LA, my favorite two comedians I saw performing was Kevin Hart and Tony Rock. Yeah, those yeah. they was the two people. I moved out here in 07. Those was the two people that I was like. And I knew Kevin Hart before I actually moved out here. I got I got him booked at my college, Clark Atlanta, in 06. Right, CAU. CAU, CAU. CAU. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but but when I see him, I just seen him on stage and Tony was destroying, bro. I seen him at the Savoy one night. Yeah. That's in Long Beach, right? Uh Inglewood. Inglewood. Yeah, Inglewood. 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 Yeah. Inglewood. <laughs> All the LA people are like, fuck you, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> Um, we don't be knowing y'all. We love y'all though. Yeah, we love y'all, man. But he destroyed. I was like, yo, this dude is one of my favorites, man. Yeah. So when you say y'all got the hottest tour, t- better than 85 South though? Well, the two man show. 85 okay. South do something different. Right. You know, all three of them are on the stage. Okay. They are doing their thing. Uh and they they're dope. But uh as far as it's like a two man traditional gotcha. kind of comedy show. Yeah, we uh okay. yeah, look at Tate, he would have said that. <laughs> no, 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 no. I mean not, not to nah, shit on you and nah, Tony. But I mean I got I got I mean, you know, me and Red got a hot show when we go out, man. We got a really hot show, you know what I'm yeah. saying? But like I said, you know, when you out on the road, man, with somebody, whatever, when you in it, you in it, and that's how you supposed to feel about it. So yeah. like I said, you know, I, I can respect that shit. We yeah. We tear down, shout out Corey Holcomb and shit. We ride too, man. It'd be crazy out there. You know? now, mm-hmm. how, how, how does Corey Holcomb shows go? I haven't been at one. What you mean how they go? With the women. Like, are they ever, do they ever it's get the same, upset? It's they... the same, it's the same as the improv in Hollywood, man. Right. Yeah, it's hilarious, <laughs> dog. It's hilarious <laughs> to, to be in the back of the room and see people mad and shit at the table. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, you would, think, you would think his audience would know him by now. 
but I guess right. they don't. Like the women, you would think women would be like, I'm not fucking with that, or I know he gonna say some disrespectful shit. So let me brace myself to not get upset. But, but you'd be surprised though if you listen to it's sometimes you listen to Corey for 15, 20 minutes in improv, but if you listen to him for like an hour, it ain't really you know what I'm saying? It's more to it than that. He just be lacing it with, you know what I'm saying? He be saying a lot of shit, man. Right. When I really yeah. sit and listen to him for an hour every night, he really be saying a lot of shit. Or you know? if you talk to Corey personally, I was, um, Monday, I was out there with, of course, Corey, he be at the um, improv. We outside, the things he say, what it is, is with him, and I was saying this when I got in the car to Kenesha, what, what, it, what it is with Corey, Whenever Corey sees an opportunity, he dunks. Mm. If somebody throws a oop as far as anything funny, he dunk it. So people, you know, they he's just that talented to just know how to do in the middle of a conversation mm -hmm. on stage. And people have to understand there's 250 different styles of comedy. Comedy is comedy. And the thing I like about is that Corey accurate, is, That's a real number? Yeah, I was serious when I first got I, I was serious to study. Yeah. yeah. It oh, is. Wow. It's different types of. I mean, just think of all four of us. We got, we all got different style of comedy, right? You know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, with with Corey, he's true to himself, and that's all I am on stage. And whether you like it or not, he's true to himself, and it's funny. It's but, funny the things he says. I mean, this man. But Corey's about, a beast. He's he's one of my. I, I feel like he's one of the funniest comedians that haven't went to that next level yet. And when I say right. next level, I mean like the Kevin Hart level mm -hmm. and, and and Cedric the Entertainer type level. But he, I, but, I think but, what he the issues he talk on though. Uh, I mean, I, <laughs> but I, it I depends. I mean, I look. I mean, I, I don't know. I I wish I understood this level thing because I think the level that he's at is a great level. Like right. being number two is better than being number one because you got to work too fucking hard to stay. You know. At, at whatever level that's supposed to be. I mean, Corey can go at wherever he go and pack out stages and rooms and stuff yeah, too. Right. He just, he just be chilling at whatever level he's at and he's he's great at it. But that's I mean, what I was just, saying about two man shows though. Like, yeah, sometimes when you out, you do feel like, yeah, you know, you got a hot tour. So yeah, kind of to that, I can re understand what Trey was saying when he was saying that shit about I mean, because I was Tony about Rock. to bust yeah, out and man. say, you know, They're me and Kanisha, well. we on tour and I I John think Cia, our tour John, is the best. John Cena said, fuck what you saying, Kevin. Uh, I ain't and saying, I said, fuck, fuck what y'all talking about. <laughs> right, I'm, right, sit, right, I'm right. sitting over here in the corner like, what? You and Tony, have you seen me and Kanisha on the road? Yeah. We're stabbing shit up out there. Like, yeah. are you kidding me? I mean, yeah, but that's the that's the mind. That's the mind. <laughs> that's, that's the mind that's that's the that you're supposed, supposed to have. I mean, you're supposed yeah. to be the but best. I let the people talk, so I'm speaking yeah. from what the people. It be like know, two people, my, nigga. My, you re, you retweet like two, talking, three people. I don't got that much time. <laughs> you don't get that. You know. You know. How much? How competitive are y'all in comedy? Competitive? Yeah. I don't think we need to compete well i mean y'all competing now so well, saying, nah we ain't, we ain't really competing i know you my, ain't competing these my real I'm, brothers i know that but i'm saying how competitive <laughs> are y'all when it comes to comedy it's very competitive but it's not it's the unspoken mm. competitiveness where right. we not like yo i'm about to be funny it's go ahead take well it. no i don't know I, I guess what i was gonna ask is competitive how like yeah who could be the funniest yeah right because or, You'll go to certain certain people. I think comedy is a, a taste. Like you know what I'm saying. Like some people have a certain taste. Like I like that. I don't even like that. You know what I'm saying. I just mm -hmm. he might be funny as hell to y'all, but I I just don't like that type of comedy. So you know I think that's relative. But like I think I'm a competitive person. Period. Bro. Me too. Like, Me too. Just all across the board. That doesn't mean that I'm almost. You know, I'm looking to step on your neck. I just think I have a, a, a knack in me to just want to be the best. And that's not like comparing myself to anybody. Just hey, I'm a shit see how good i can get at this shit you right. know or whatever i'm doing and you know the the funny part about it is me and tony are competitive with each other so oh, okay. so it was just like you know i get off the stage and he like okay like, okay you know what i mean it's like <laughs> it that, that makes us he pushes for me to be great and and in return i push for him to make sure yo i gotta bring it trade this brother i gotta bring it you yeah know what I mean? so it's different kind of competitiveness mm -hmm. i don't like the net you know with that it could be negative competitiveness right. you know mm -hmm. what i mean which you know we all deal yeah, with because the, pe the petty shit because a rat race is a competition too yeah you know what yeah I'm saying? You know so what I'm and i'm better than like me and trey are very we are secretly competitive of everything. He went on the prices right and won. I went on the prices right first, the real prices right. I did not win, but I made it all the way to the end also. 
When you went back in the nineties, when the fuck? <laughs> I did. I went before COVID. He went after COVID, so oh, his okay. don't after count COVID. for real. So, he wasn't right. no crowd she's saying, I got, she's saying I got a. I, I won like the Lakers won the bubble championship. That's yeah. why I won my prices. Yeah. Oh my it God. don't even count, man. I had a thousand people yelling at me, telling me what to say. I'm confused. <laughs> this, Trey, like I won everything. I'm like, boo. Yeah, I did. I did, man. You know, look, look, look. We, we, loving we, me. Don't hate my, me. My mom used to. I used to watch the Price Right a lot, but I ain't been fucking with the Drew Carey one. I like yeah. Drew Carey, I guess, but I don't but know. But you can't I'm, help to watch that shit when you when your <laughs> shower <laughs> running and shit. Like, bitch, move the nine. Hey, hey, when I first got on the Price is Right though, on the joint, Ed, why can't why Kevin call me? <laughs> Yo, Kevin called me too. Kevin, I saw you on the Price. No, you right? called me. You was like, John see it. Everybody want to be on the prices right now. Yeah, the same I, thing. I, uh, how you yeah, remember there. doing that? No, I don't. Yeah, we call I, it. I remember calling it Trey. Because <laughs> when you said you was on the prices right just now, I'm thinking like, damn, did I ever Yo, see that? You she didn't me. win, so it didn't happen. Oh, it nah, didn't he happen. called me. <laughs> he called me. <laughs> it didn't was get like, no traction. Everybody want to be on the it's prices right. It's sort of about where your boy win. But I know but I know that. I remember Trey because I'm like, man, if you don't get the see what they do to see You on the prices right? Ah! Cold. That's how he was with me. It just was in 2018. So you know, don't remember. Josie, beat me. I don't be. It's <laughs> all right, baby. It's she okay. Be, she could be putting me in narratives and shit. I'd like, be like, okay, well, fuck it. Right. <laughs> I was there because that's a big deal. That just made me think, man. Uh, getting <laughs> phone calls. I remember I booked something one time and somebody called and apologized to me for laughing at my dreams earlier in my oh, career. Wow. Right. Yeah. It's when I had book rush hour, and they was like, "Damn, my bad, Jay." Like I remember you said you wanted to do like an action comedy one day, and I laughed at you, and now here you are starring on rush hour. Have y'all ever gotten a phone call after y'all done booked some shit, or something was popping from somebody that low key threw you some shade? Absolutely. I mean, yeah. And then they came back Absolutely. and admitted it. Yeah, well, then, yeah, and they came back and admitted that's, it. That's kind of what happened. You know, I'm gonna tell you something that's crazy, bro. I'm gonna try to make this uh, Instagram version. It's very short. It's Cat, Not man. Not we got. Oh, all right, all right. Well, this dude, man. When I first moved out, it was just Cat, man. Shout out to him, his dog. His, his name was Hustle King, but he was cool. He's from Detroit. We was hanging out doing music and shit. And he was like, "Yo, he used to talk a lot of shit, like, because he was younger than me. I moved out here at 29 and shit. He was young, mm. like 22. So you mm. know, niggas is brash, competitive. Mm -hmm. Two Detroit niggas. I, and he was like, oh, nigga, because I was doing music. If I was like, yeah, nigga, whatever, nigga. He's like, yeah, nigga, you ain't gonna do it. You gotta do it this way, nigga. I'm telling you, nigga, you don't know nothing, man. I'm telling, you know, just was always like that. Like, all right, nigga, well, fuck it then. Right. So the nigga showed up at my party Saturday, dog. Mm -hmm. Really? And came by and tapped me because he had all I seen him on the IG. Because at this time I wasn't nobody. Oh, out so here. this recent. This started in 2007, but I wasn't doing nothing. And I was right. trying to figure this shit out. Right. right and right, he right. kind of had traction because he did like a TV show or something. So this nigga's like, nigga, you don't know what you're talking about, nigga. And just to always feel threatened. And I seen a nigga walk through to me in a party. So what's up, nigga? Oh man, dog, you did that shit. Mm -hmm. He was like, bro, yeah. mm -hmm. you did it. And I posted him on my story and shit, real talk, but he was like, dog, nigga, for real, you was for real. You know what I'm saying? Because I had a right. more mature approach to it. I wasn't quick to jump out there and be the nigga doing this and doing that. So he would always be like, oh, nigga, you ain't doing it right. And shit like that. So when you say somebody come back and right. really, but I can respect somebody like that. I respect that too, yeah. though. Yeah. I can respect yeah. somebody like that 100%, man, because yeah. that's a fact. It, it was real. So I uh, shout out Hustle King, man. But that's real talk. And that was inspiration too back then. Yeah. yeah. Word yeah. up. I had somebody when I first got into the comedy game when I was stinking it up. Well, you, you got know. a radio, you got a podcast radio. <laughs> sultry, you got a sultry ass voice. Was yeah. like, I remember. Yeah. All right. Yeah. My bad. Go for it. My bad. Sultry. <laughs> sultry. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> you, should, you should talk with a satin clothes on. But go ahead. Um, and so this is when, you know, everybody don't know. I started comedy in Atlanta, but I only did like two open mics at Uptown in Atlanta. Then I moved to the DMV. And and so I was still not funny when I got to the DMV. And there was this one particular dude that would see me stink it up. And he would always be like, hey, man, you might want to do something different. This ain't this ain't your thing. And then he like six months or seven months later, he saw me. And I had a hot five, mm -hmm. hot Sizzle. five to hot seven. And he was there and he was like, yo, you know what I mean? Yeah. And he was like, damn, man, my fault. I'm sorry. You know what I mean? Because yeah. I had that hot five and hot seven. So he came to me and was like, yo, yo, you, you straight up you doing your thing now. You know what I'm saying? So so that was pretty cool. But, you know, we always going to have them doubters and in, 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 in people who going to not not believe in you. Yeah. When I um. 
when I first said I was moving to LA, a DC comic, I mean, it was like my going away show back home. Right. A DC comic walk up and I'm, I'm like, yeah, I'm moving to LA next week, blah, 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 blah. He straight up shut the conversation down. You'll be back. Nobody go out there and make it. You'll be back. Damn. Oh, Off yeah. the break, like, didn't even, congratulations, you need anything? I know somebody out there, nothing. Yeah. yeah, whatever, you'll be back. He is the reason why I'm not back. Him and about four other people, including Kevin Tate, which he probably won't remember. But he, he, he I'm serious, there's certain people that I hear that voice. I do remember that. And I will not, when I tell you, I will not go back just because of that. I ain't gonna say his name, but that one comic yeah. that, I know you talk that about. shut me down was like, you, you, uh, you she'll be back. Man, what what city you was in? DC. Was in DC. Yeah, I, it probably was the same DC. person who told me like, well, why you moving? Why you gonna move to LA? Why you gonna book you moving to LA? Like, you know what I mean? Like you gotta have a name for, you know, everybody's yeah. dream ain't your dream. Like, like when I when I got into comedy, like I did, I grew up doing theater. You know what I mean? I'm with the Clark for TV fam. So this is always like something that I knew I Your was thing. going to be doing. Right. When I when my first time I came to Cali, I was eight. And I was like, yo, mom, I want you to take me to Rodeo Drive. I want you to take me here. Like, like I already knew from that age that I was gonna be out here. And when I got into doing theater and acting and all that shit like that. This is where I knew I was gonna be, so it was never like a thing like, uh, and I say, yo, I'm coming to LA, I'm gonna be that. So, regardless if I who is in your circle when you're not here and, and you're doing things, they don't know what your vision and dream has always been, right? I've always thought bigger. And see, the I mean? thing with me is, I never intended to be in LA, but what it is with me, I'm a person that when I do something, I do it all the way. Yeah. So I did comedy in DC for four years and I'm like, I've hit every thing. I, I, I feel like I hit the ceiling on the East coast. I hit every oh. club you can hit all up and down the East coast. I'm bored. I did it. So I'm just about to leap out here because I, if I want to really do this comedy thing and Monique at the time was like one of my, like, if you're allowed to idle anyone, she mm -hmm. was just like somebody I looked up to. And I'm like, yo, Still? I'm once like, I, <laughs> <laughs> fuck your feelings. Once I, <laughs> once I seen her win an Oscar and I seen Gabby Sidibe win an Oscar, mm. I was like, oh, these big bitches, oh, they, they want big black bitch. I'm out. Right. Like, I'm a successful head stylist. I mean, big money, big houses, all the cars. I'm, I already knew how I felt to have you know, money and, and things. I never knew the life that I lived when I lived here. I just, I never even been to Cali. Well, you, wow. you know, a lot of people are safe though, Justin. Like a lot of times what you find is that like people, like you say, your people in DC was like, man, you ain't, you gotta be, people are safe, bro. Like, yeah. mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? People are just safe. And I, and I didn't know, I didn't even know what that meant when I came out here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Until I had been out here and looked back like, oh, you scared to jump. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because mm -hmm. you don't know it. You don't it even really know. You, right. You don't even know you jump until you swim out and look back and you're like, oh, what? you got to get off that. Yeah. Right. And so, you know, again, I didn't have no answers coming out here. But I, I mean, I talk about that a lot about moving out here, you know, being a ball player and then just like just fucking off. You know what I mean? Making money. I was like, man, I'm about to go to L.A., man, be a comedian. And I'm talking about off straight off like. I'm about to go do it. Niggas like, what? Yeah, man. But were you funny growing up? Like, it Well, you know what, man? People would say that, but I wasn't somebody that's always trying to be funny. But I, in class, I was funny. I always had so yeah. I, And I used to always, Justin, I used to always play with words, man. Oh, like, okay. And that's as I can remember looking out the window as a kid. And if it said, don't do drugs, I'd be trying to figure out how to say it in another way. Or mm -hmm. just, I can remember that now. Right. right? And so that's always been like, man, I'm be a comedian. Because my brother tried it. He got... You know, he did it in the sixth grade. I was in the fourth grade. The whole hood was talking about him. Like, yo, your brother was terrible. Yeah. And, then, <laughs> and then they was like, but some of them was like, he was good. He tried yeah. stand up in the sixth grade? In the sixth grade talent show. Gotcha, wow. okay. And oh. so he came back and God, all that, I remember was the- bravery, whole, bro. That's bravery, yeah, bro. And he grade. never did it again. But yeah. the whole hood was talking about him and it sparked me. They're like, Kevin, you should have did it. Now we talk about fourth grade, Kevin, you should have been one trying to do comedy. Oh, right, man. but I say it all the time. like. My brother doing that right. was the inspiration for it. Hell yeah, man. But I never did it because I wanted to play ball and shit. So I knew that, you know what? I could, When I said I'm going to Cali to be that, I really felt like I probably could do that, man. Yeah, yeah. If I, if I, if I go in that direction.
Yeah. You know, I felt like I could probably do that. Nah, man, you're a beast, bro. No, I, I still remember. That. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I remember um, one of the first times I ever seen you perform because, you know, I pride myself on being a little beast myself. Yeah. Uh, sure. When I want to be, you know, when I want to be. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Because when we were talking about being competitive, the only time I flex my funny, honestly, is like mm. chocolate sundaes. That's the only yeah. that's the only time I kind of flex to, to remind niggas mm. it's a reason why I'm at where <laughs> I'm at. You know, but mm. other than chocolate sundaes, yeah. yeah. Cause so Nick, I be I talk to people that see me bomb so many times, but because yeah. I'm always trying exactly yeah, yeah. You, yeah. You, 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 new that's, stuff. Yeah, right, right. I admire that about you. Right. Yeah, I'm all yeah, you don't see me bomb in the belly room. You know, no, 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 yeah. yeah, I thought that's all you do. So I'm glad you talked ah, about that you do something hilarious. else. You know, oh, play. hilarious. I'm yeah. playing. Oh, yeah. You see me kill too. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> now that now, now, now the hate no, you do, motherfucker. <laughs> now now, now <laughs> that the hating you can say you ain't never seen me kill. No, yeah, yeah. I have seen you. Yeah, I'm about to say, but um, but but that's how I am at the belly room. Like yeah. the belly room, either it's some nights where I be like, nigga, it's whatever. I'm trying some shit. And yeah. if I bomb, I bomb. It is what it is. Yeah. And then there's other nights in the belly room where I go in there with a mission. Right. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like on some like I believe in that. Yeah. Yeah. Hell sometimes yeah. sometimes I, you gotta do that shit. I believe with a in a mission yep. is I believe in what you say when you say some nights I'm on a mission. Right. right. Mm-hmm. And that's that I'm gonna push through, I'm gonna enunciate, I'm gonna hit every beat. Right One point, and you know, I like I say, everybody has their choice. Like, at, I feel like at Crack 'em Up Thursdays in the belly room, that's what I, I always felt like that's where I can get my you know, my new stuff off, or even yeah. Chocolate Sundays when I used to host open um oh, yeah. Chocolate Sunday first. Person. Man, I had all that's when everything was out, you know, and you understand that this town is a showcase town, you don't get too many times to bomb out here in this town, <laughs> yeah, before yeah. you hard to even get another chance. So, you could play the old. I got a hundred jokes in a hundred. You can play that game if you want to, or you can hit them in the mouth and move on. You know what, man? Like for me, because you know, I, I come I used to host all kind of shit out here. You know, right. I helped tripping too. on Tuesdays, the Zen Lounge. Man, the everything. Like, I was well, the did. host. Tracy. I was you the, the host, host with the most. Host. And and see, a lot of people don't even know that. I mean, people like one of the best hosts. People don't ever mention me. That's true. I'm one of the best fucking hosts. <laughs> That's <laughs> and funny. Trey you know love I mean? Trey. Because you know I mean? I've hosted so many different type of things. That's true. Music. So I had to always use a different muscle when it came to hosting. So I'm one of the, the dopest hosts out here. And with that being said, when like how you say you go to Chocolate Sundays to sh- to make sure, hey, this is what I'm gonna show. Cause you know all the comedians are exactly. judging whatever. Yep. <laughs> now I I don't feel like I need to perform not anymore. Facts. Like, do y'all still feel like I have to? And when I say perform, meaning like do the most. Like I gotta make you, let sure. Me tell, let me tell like, you. I want, you I, want like go, I, I want to ask. I want to. I want to. I guess have him finish his question. Like, are you saying like when you say you don't feel like you have to perform? What do you mean by that? For like comics. Yeah, perform for comics or to let the people know that you're funny. To let Ronnie know that you're funny or to let uh the comedian comedians know that you're funny i mean and when i say that of course you're not gonna go up there and just fuck around but i don't feel like i have to perform anymore yeah i don't do that for, i, I like, never have for comics i never even i've never yeah. had for comics i I've, feel like i don't have to go boom 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 anymore i feel like i could be like let, let me, me tell you, this let me tell you what i've done yes i have from time to time that's my reminder set okay and i do that because i always feel like i have a target on my back because of my success oh you see what i'm saying i've always felt like oh wait how he booked that Mm -hmm. how he get on tv Mm -hmm. what he 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 ain't that funny Mm -hmm. okay so no no no. there's a reason why so that's when i do my let me remind motherfuckers if there was any doubt to you thinking in your private circle how justin got to where he's at Mm -hmm. i'm gonna show you the level of my comedy, how I got to where I'm at, and then I'll go back and work out. Well, why do you, shit. why do you, do you, why do you feel like those voices are happening? Oh, they do. They like, but I'm me. saying, what makes you feel that way? Have somebody actually uh, came to you? Oh, and said, yeah, yeah. I've had people, I've had people either tell me that someone have said such something. thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, okay. no, yeah, no, they I'm, be the first ones to say. Yeah, because yeah. they do. Yeah. <laughs> they do. Yeah. No. Somebody told me yesterday. Literally, one of my friends back home, in the middle of the night, it was one here. Was like, yeah, they just say something about you on on fifty fifty one. I'm like, what? What's fifty fifty one? Fifty one. Fifty one fifty. Oh, gotcha, gotcha, Corey gotcha. show. My bad. And I'm like, what? They was like, yeah, they was calling you a monkey and this man. I'm like, what? I had to go back last night, watch what they were saying and all that. But what it was was we were joning outside of the club the mm-hmm. night before, 
Craig and I. Mm-hmm. Right. So Craig said something on there when, when Corey was talking about someone else being a monkey. But they sliced it, and I'm just saying how quick stuff comes yeah. back to you right. that, you know, can or cannot. And I had to, like, address it to the person because I knew that, you know, Craig and them didn't mean any harm, but people yeah. will come I had, back. I had somebody tell me, it, MacGyver had got canceled. I'm not bullshitting. MacGyver got canceled. After five seasons. After five which seasons. Which is uh, dope. Okay. Golly, who gets five seasons? And, and, right? I, and I came back out here and, and I said, I'm going to do all new material. Mm-hmm. I was like, I hadn't been able to really do stand up for six years because right. before that I was on rush hour. So really, was so even when you when people would see me in the belly room, people would see me when I'm flying into town trying to work out material. Mm-hmm. My, I'm like, nigga, you should be funnier than me because you've been been able to get up every goddamn day. Nigga, mm-hmm. I've been right. in fucking Atlanta filming mm-hmm. all goddamn day for the last six years. Okay. So anyways, MacGyver got canceled. A month go by, two months, I'm working out on all new shit. Somebody was like, yeah, I was talking to a comic the other night. They, they was like, man, Justin Harris fell off. <laughs> Oh, yeah, man. well, you know, motherfuckers is chatty patty. Yeah. Yeah. Chatty patty. Yeah. 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 You know, the funny thing about yeah. me but, is a lot of comics don't know what they're going to get when they see me. They don't even but, know the type of comedy, the style. They, they don't, I, I, I'm silent with it. Right. Until it's time for me to really produce. But but I want to speak to that, too. Yeah, I, want, I, I got to speak to that because, and again, everybody has their thing, man, because you have to you continue to. You'd be surprised. People think I got nine minutes worth of material, bro. Mm-hmm. People think that I got nine minutes worth of material. I'm not bullshitting. <laughs> they they bro. timing yeah. it with a stop. No, when I say yeah. nine minutes, bro, the hot, the they hot see thing. the shit that I did on HBO. The depth jams. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's people that really think that I, I do an hour when I headline. I've headlined overseas, mm. over 50 shows. Yeah. Headline. Right? An hour. Right? And then, like, when I'm on the road, I'm doing 35 to 40. People think I got nine minutes. So the crazy part about it out here, by the time I come back, I, I don't – I'll sneak some new shit in if I'm hosting, which I like to host. Yeah. yeah. I like, I to, like host. to host. I, I'm, not, like, I'm not yeah. the world's greatest host, but I'm not a bad host. I right. just don't yeah. think about it like that. Right. But, but hosting is cool because that's when you can do it. And that's, when I, had, that's when I was able to do my best hosting at Chocolate Sundays, man. You can't beat that type of interaction. However – I don't understand when sometimes I hear people say I turn it on when I have to. That's why I wanted to unpack what Trey was saying. We said I don't feel like I have to perform because this is still, you know, Hollywood, California, USA, mm-hmm. right? And some stages you don't have to. You know what I'm saying? Is you supposed to throw some new shit in? Because like you say, but we're always trying to get better, mm-hmm. right? Right. Can I be honest? So when the light come on, mm-hmm. if you're saying the lights are here. But I'm only gonna go 65 percent, and I guess that's more of to what John C was saying, saying like I'm not gonna pull it out unless I have to. Mm-hmm. But when do you not have to? But I'm gonna be honest with you. It's certain places like when I moved to from DC to Los Angeles, and I seen how comedy is here. I, I'm gonna be real with you. I think when I hit some of these LA stages, I think I give you like 30 percent because you don't have to work hard to make the crowd laugh here. Now, if I took that 30% and went to D.C., I would get booed. When I go home, I work. I remember one time Tony Baker was in D.C., and I just happened to be home that week, so I went to wherever he went. Of course, they put me up, and he's like, like whoa, why have I never seen that John Cena? That's what Kanisha said, too. She's like, when we on the road, like, whoa. And I'm like, I don't know. Is this something about the in L.A.? Or maybe it's just the, because of the pay or, what, or just the energy, whatever it is. I don't give all of John C. And, I, and it sounds whack, right? You got to you gotta give yeah, it. Yeah, but it sounds whack. But yeah, I'm, I'm just saying, I don't right. give. I'm just saying. But, that, but what is this? Unpack that shit, don't you? So, so when I'm saying, you know, do y'all still feel like I have to perform? I'll give oh, y'all right. an yeah, example of what I mean. So, you know, when you, you know, your first time you get booked for Chocolate Sunday, the first time you get booked for the improv and all that. And your first few times, yeah. your job is to go out there and murder, murder, murder. Yeah. After 12 years, you no longer have to show that I am funny. Mm-hmm. Right. So now I can take a situation that happened the day before or that day mm-hmm. and go on that stage on the Chocolate Sundays and talk about mm-hmm. what happened that day. Right. And I'm writing it. I didn't, I used to didn't write, I, when I write my material, I write it on stage. Mm-hmm. But 
I never, but when I would perform, I would make sure I knew boom, 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 boom. So now when I say, do I feel like I have to perform? I can go to Chocolate Sundays and be like, okay, I'm going to write this new bit on stage tonight. I understand. Chocolate so Sunday. perform means so, set. Right. Now, but I took that as right. perform means set to you. Right. See me? But perform, I, can I, I just, always, go ahead. I thought it was an energy thing. When you say perform, right, like, yeah. I'm just going to go up here and just, right. no, but it always has to come out of the, like, what happened today? You you broke it down in your mind. You like I'm gonna go up here and I'm gonna say this shit, but it's gotta still come out of a, of a performance okay. vessel, most like, likely, because we are performers. So when they yeah. in the crowd, they yeah. ain't coming to see no lackluster. They mm -hmm. want to see if it, I don't give a fuck if the joke was right now. So I guess that's how I was understanding yeah. you by saying perform. Yeah, because there's a point in time where you would not do nothing new at Chocolate Sundays if you didn't know it worked or not. Right. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. You would you would always make sure you go ahead and with your. Bang, but you bang, know, bang. Kevin said something to me a long time ago that I always remember, which was, if it ain't a hit a heater, I take it out the set. He was like, I'm doing heaters, basically. Right. Yeah. And, and if it don't hit to the certain level that you wanted to hit to, nigga, it's out of there. Right? right. That's what Either you, fix it or get it out of there. Right. And, yeah. and if somebody told me that up at Flappers in a contest when I first started, I thought I did good. The <laughs> judge was like, yeah. But that one joke was, eh. And I was like, yeah. He's like, yeah, well, if it ain't good enough. He said, because all your jokes is either get it up to this point or get it out to your set. So that's I always looked at it as trimming the fat. So trimming the fat. How do you get it to that point if you not doing working it? it out? You have to work right, it out. Right, but what I'm saying is you have to work it out. But each bit, all the bits I have didn't start out the way they are. Right. Mm. You know, they didn't just, I didn't just pop up. They continue to evolve. I can tell you. Yeah, but some of them continue to evolve. So, like you say, how do you how does it get to that level? It's the it's the it's probably more so the content of it. It's like okay, it's just not a good bit, mm -hmm. right? It don't fit. If this is in your set and you continue to go up every single night, this one hit ten, this one hit ten, and then this, that and one, then that one continues to go six, seven, eight. You know it's going six, seven, and eight. You know you' about to get a lower laugh when you say this right now. But either you change it. And get it here, or just stop saying it, right? Yeah. And because it, it takes away from the continuity of what you're doing to the crowd. <laughs> or oh, listen, I was that Delay told me the same thing in a nicer way. In a nice way, he was. We had did a show in like a, in, in some casino years ago, and we rolled out there together. And um, <laughs> I, the first night, I did okay. Yeah. He was like, "All right, man. Well." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, he said, "Well, listen." listen. You, you know what jokes do work, right? <laughs> and you know which ones don't. So next tomorrow, you know the ones that don't, maybe not, maybe you may not want to do. Maybe you know, you know yeah, yeah, maybe yeah. So, But it was a nice way of him saying, like, nigga, do the jokes that work. The ones that don't work for this show, because we had a casino, you may want to take the motherfuckers out, even if you only got three minutes worth of material left. Yeah. You know, just to make sure that you kind of hit people in this particular crowd. I believe. And then, like I said, though. It, it's different styles of comedy. See me, how Trey was like something. Now I go on stage and I, I talk what happened yesterday. I've always been that comic. I've always been that comic that could fly off the cuff. I've always been that comic that could change up my set. Like it's it's so many people that are like, she don't got a set, so we don't know what she's gonna say. We're not gonna book her. That's fine. All of that's fine. I do know that I'm funny. So the whole goal is to be funny. I was born this way. I was class clown every year you could be in school and all of that. I have a set. I do my set when I feel the set is relevant. You know what I'm saying? When I feel like I did my set, and, and Kanisha, I will shout out to her. She has got me working more and more because I'm one of them people that would be like, I mean, the set is okay, but I mean, I can throw in a joke here and there, and you won't know if it's a part of my set, this and that, this and that. And she's just like, but you want to structure, blah, 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 blah. So I have you actually- You that much funny. Yeah, yeah and, and, much, and the funny yeah. thing is, I have actually decided to start doing that in like the last three or four months, especially since we've been on the road. And it's like, okay, yeah, the set, the set is super cool. But I also am that particular comic that can come off the cuff but, in in the moments. Okay, and that's dope. But I'm gonna add to it because I fuck with you, sis. Yeah. We in you in the business, right? Mm -hmm. So when it's time to say, "All right, we need to call on you. We got the cameras. We want you to do this. Um, let's say we want you to do this show, this comedy show. It's coming on Showtime or something. We want you. Yeah. Now you got a set. 
Mm-hmm. But that set ain't polished. Mm. No, no, see, no. Be, the set is polished because I haven't had the set since I started coming. And that's a problem. And you ain't been working on mm. it. And that's, I have. But let me let me glad. Shout out my dog Boo Hell. <laughs> what I'm saying is that mm-hmm. you you know, it's nothing wrong. Cause see when you say I'm just funny, it's kinda like, you know what? Cause this we're professionals, wouldn't we agree? Yeah. 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 But some motherfuckers just who? And some motherfuckers playing the NBA mm. because they train. That's the difference. Talk yeah. that shit, kid. You know, in the NBA, they train. That's what makes them professionals. Because you can go to the park and see a bunch of people that can hoop. What separates us is being polished mm-hmm. every night to put them to call on you to come off and hit the shot. You got three shots a night. You got to make two of them motherfuckers. You have to be polished and ready to go. You can't say, all right, let me go in my bag and find my set. They want me to do yeah. a set. That motherfucker got to be polished. I believe that. And ain't no one way to do comedy. So make sure y'all keep that no, in mind. No, and, 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 and honestly, I kept I am I am 100% agreeing with all of that. But in the NBA, you also got, and I'm not, I'm not saying I'm better than nobody, nothing like that, but you also do have the Kobe Bryant, the LeBron James. They train. They, they train. They go to the gym. And I, they, what I'm saying, if anything, they practice more than but, everybody. But listen to what I'm telling y'all. All right, I'm going to shut up. Up. No, I'm going to shut up. I just want y'all to hear, hear my, my point of view. I do my jokes within me doing the talent that God blessed me with. Mm-hmm. So I know what jokes hit and I also know when it's time to like if anybody's ever sat in my birthday shows, it's back, 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 all set. All jokes that I know gonna hit the line, the order, the da 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 I know my set. I I but I know how to slide my set into my natural born talent. So people like I said, people don't know what they're gonna get and it's cool, but I I just I just say it like this. I, I got to make people laugh. I make people laugh. However you gonna do it, however you are gonna put me, that's fine. Mm-hmm. But when when it's time to show up, please believe I'm gonna show up. Okay. I'm just one. I mean, I'm just one of them people that I'm going to show up. I'm not gonna be out this joint looking a mess. Right. And it's not. I mean, you can say what you want, and of course we all bomb because that's just what we do. We have to. We have to bomb to even get better. How about you? If you're trying to grow as a comedian, yeah. you're going to you struggle it, a little bit. Bombing is the best thing that we could do for, in our career. Like, my, my mentor told me that every bomb is like the greatest thing because, especially if you feel like you're on a high horse and you bomb, I mean, it, it, make, it take you back to where you really need to be. I've been recently working on my new 20 because we about to start repeating my, well, my new. My new 20 out of the 30, 35 that I do on the road mm-hmm. because we starting to repeat cities. So even oh, John C. Yeah. caught me at the high high working, working out my whole new shit that. So like for me, even when I say I could talk about what happened the day before, whatever, it's still in a structural manner exactly. because of my training. Absolutely. So I know how to effectively get the, get the joke across. Right. Because, because of the, of the training. So it's just like, oh shit, this happened to me yesterday. Like, you know, and it'd be real shit. And, and, and but I'm skilled enough to know how to put it in how to put it in Absolutely. You, you put know. it in the blender. You know how to yeah, put it in the blender. I know how to do all that. Same. Absolutely. Now at the end it, I would then determine, okay, I need to I should have put two more strawberries in there. I, I need yeah. a little more salt. But right. but yes. the audience may not particularly know that. Mm-hmm. I, but I I know it. You know what I'm saying? Hey, who, who who's a comedian that y'all seen that y'all was like, I got this? They made you want to step your shit up. Just Tony Baker. Who? Just Niche. Just Niche. Oh. Man, I see Just Niche. She's like my favorite comic of all the comics, period. She's hilarious. She is so funny. Every time I watch her, I be like, Jay. I've never seen her stand up. Yeah, just oh, I know her. We cool and everything. No. 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 I say Tony Baker. I don't say, I don't know if it, it makes me. Feel like I gotta step my shit up because me and Tony Baker are two different type of. Con- I just yeah. think that not enough people know about Dog. Like I oh, think they about to. They yeah, know, they it's know, like they Dog know. is really funny, man. Like since yeah. I first came out here, like we said, I was like that dude. So like I don't know if it, he makes me want to step my shit up because you know what I'm saying it's not it's not I don't look at him like that because we have two different styles and whatever. But I just bring his name up to say like. Yo, dog, dog is funny with you. Right. Yeah. I'm a definitely a Tony Baker fan. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's so. his structure. It's this, it's this, and it, with with Tony, to me, you could see, you could really see his work he puts in, and how hard he he 
how hard he he wants to grow. You can just kind of see it in the stand up. Yeah. I, I like the fact that I'm Tony that Tony Baker could talk about anything, anything. and make it fun. Anything. It comes out of Tony that, Baker, that, right? That's yeah, and, and that's what I, I admire about his style of comedy. Like, yo, this nigga talk about bees. He's like a Seinfeld <laughs> elevator. He's like a black, a black Seinfeld, yeah. a black Seinfeld and that, that can do act outs and shit like that. Yeah, and mm-hmm. see, for me, I like little, like little Rel is one for me. Oh yeah, and, and that's based off of his characters and his. How he animates and bring these characters to life on stage, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and that's something that you know I always want or try to be better at uh, in my set. Mm-hmm. You know, this recently, this past weekend, I added something where I was very animated and whatever, and it was killing. Mm-hmm. And I just and I, the longer I did it, the more they was laughing. And I tend to be the cool nigga on right. stage. Like, and I and I've always been a goofy, silly dude. So I'm like Trey. Like the older I got, the more reserved I started becoming. I'm like Trey. You got to get back to yeah. still getting that. Uh, you know. Yeah. That you got to get man. ugly. Yeah. And I'm always yeah. and I'm yes. always believe that. That's you do I mean. that good too. That, and I, I ain't trying to be funny. No. No. As far as no, oh, does that you act take out it. Right. Right. I it's, love that. And yeah, because I like to consider myself a cool dude too. Mm-hmm. But and I am. But I said I'm not gonna let that shit get me on stage, yeah. right? Because right. I can slip into cool. <laughs> <deep. Right. laughs> and I said I don't want to be that. Yeah. And I have to get ugly up there. Yeah. I have to figure out how to be ugly and come on stage and be a beautiful. Just be beautiful. Yes, no. be- because when you go in, dog, when you go in like that, the people see it. You know, and I've always just felt like that was my style of comedy, bro. Mm-hmm. From Martin Lawrence, you yeah, know what I'm saying? that's yeah. just always been my style. I said, if I'm gonna get on stage, I'm gonna be like, fuck it, I'm gonna fall, I'm gonna do whatever the fuck I'm doing yeah. mm-hmm. to get it off, man. And so, yeah. you know, shout out to that's been a lot of guys that you know, Arnez J, shit like that. You mm-hmm. remember him? Yeah. yeah. So yeah, though, but yeah, I understand what you're saying when you start connecting on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I, well, I hope you saw Arnie and Jay and he didn't see you. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is your whole shit. This, this is before I even tried to scare this hell. I was been doing your whole set. I don't know if that's even true. That's just a funny <laughs> thing. So, yeah, that's what you hear, which is messed up. But I mean, that is what you hear. Um, Keenan Ivory Wayne's once said, there's no vanity in comedy. Yeah. Or acting. Or acting. You yeah. got you to be able to look stupid. Because even yeah. in your auditions, you know... I mean, like, I, like in my audition, that's what I I do. I like you're not you know you're not trash, but I have to acting. let myself know when I'm playing a certain role uh, that, or when I'm auditioning for a certain role that I, I'm not me. So I have to go back to and tap into other things and let me know that I'm not me. Are you and, a good auditioner? And now I am. Okay. Before I was horrible. Oh my god. But now I'm about to ask you how y'all. Oh, yeah, I, 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 you know, I, I, I booked the, book the one liner and hats on HBO. Yeah. You know, it's hard to book a one liner. Yeah, I mean, episodes 206. Let's see the turn up. <laughs> but Justin, because, you know, give people flowers. Justin is somebody that is so dope with going out of just doing his character yeah, just yeah. going out of who Justin is I, I love that about that's him that's what I love to know too I, I wanted to know I was gonna I was gonna turn like man how the fuck do you audition like because I book some things but you, you booking shit like uh, I was gonna let my hair grow out and shit yeah, 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 yeah. but what is it about audition I did this after I got rich yeah you know what I'm right, saying? Right, right, right. <laughs> but, but, but how do you but what is it about auditioning? Like, what can, in a nutshell, about going into an audition? Well, see, here's the, the tricky thing now. Nowadays, most auditions are self taped. Yep. So you don't even really go into the room like you used to. Mm-hmm. So that's even something I'm figuring out because, see, when you used to go into an audition, so when MacGyver ended, I was I barely auditioned by choice. I was like, I'm trying to finally do my own shit, whatever, mm-hmm. whatever. When I started back auditioning for projects that I'm passionate about, right? The difference is now it's like it's hard because you can't really build a rapport with the casting director. You can't win the room, you can't win the room no more. Yeah, no. So now just off your audition, you gotta be on point. Your shit yeah. just gotta be fired. But let me now let me go back to rush hour days. Yeah, that's what right. I wanna like. Yeah. I booked that shit off of me not listening to casting. They wanted the character to be a certain type of way, and I was like, and it was really wasn't even the casting, it was the casting assistant, mm-hmm. because the main casting lady wasn't there that day, which low-key pissed me off, because I was on some, oh, you don't think I'm worth you being in the room. Yeah. So that low-key already put a little chip on my shoulder, the fact that the head casting lady wasn't even there for my mm-hmm. audition. It was her assistant that I was reading with. 
But what I said was, I just gotta fucking do me. And what I do is, a little trick for the people out there. I find moments to do my own little improv within the scene. Yeah. It ain't a lot, but if it's just a line or two, mm-hmm. find moments where you're not going to be stepping on the next person's line, but find a moment either within your line or at the very end of the scene where you could throw in one of your own jokes because they hear the same shit. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? They hear the same shit from 100, 200 people, but if they hear something that's a little different, like, Set yeah. yourself apart. You gotta set yourself apart. Mm-hmm. You have to. So even with rush hour, they was like, well, "Don't try to be too big, and you know, and don't try to be too funny. Play it kind of real." And I was like, "You can't tell me about Carter, Detective mm-hmm. Carter. More. I grew up on fucking rush hour and, and Chris, Chris, Chris Tucker. Mm-hmm. So I was like, you can't fucking tell me how to play this character better than me. And so you just gotta have that. Like, let me just. You gotta bring you to the character. That's what it really is, bro. Yeah. You gotta bring whatever your you you is." To that character, I would say throw in a couple improv lines, at least one at the end. Right, right, right. And that's what's going to help set you apart from the other people. But you know what, though? I I believe in something called, and I know y'all probably do too, manifestation and the law of attraction. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You, from when, the the moment I met you, would always talk about that particular character. Oh, really? You know that. You used to always talk about um, how you wanted to play... um, Chris Tucker. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? Yeah, no. Uh, I mean, yeah, yeah. I don't doubt it. And, and, and the fact that you got that is something that you spoke. Mm. You know, you spoke and so deeply passionate about it, it had to happen. Yeah, I have a shrine of him on my wall that I pray to. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Chris. But I did meet him a long time ago. I was doing uh, a movie called Stop the I mean, Y'all know Stop the Stop the Art. So anyways, he came on set, and I was in college at the time, and I went up to him, and I was like, hey man, I'm fucking like 20 at the time, so I was like, hey man, I'm just standing next to you, because I'm hoping your aura gonna make me funnier. And he was like, ah, you're pretty funny man. Yeah, yeah. you're pretty funny man. You know, <laughs> but yeah, I've always... Yeah, look. Fast y'all, forward. Y'all, y'all never linked up or talked to somebody that y'all looked up to, and now y'all either kind of cool or y'all had a conversation. Oh, like, yeah, and Martin Lawrence for me. Yeah, uh, Big Gregory for me. So I'm sitting. It's Mike Epps. I'm in a strip club in Detroit. Okay, me and my cousin <laughs> is at a strip club in. On, I'm talking about in the hood. We just in that motherfucker chilling, man. And uh, Mike Epps was in town for the weekend. We was at the Brass Key. And we sitting up in there, and I look over there, Mike Epps at the table. I'm sitting with my cousin. I said, oh, man, I'm going to go say something to this nigga. Now, I ain't even close to comedy. I'm in the middle of the street. <laughs> at this time, I'm in, the I'm in the middle of the streets. So I'm sitting down, and I get up out, my, um, I get up out the seat. I walk over to the table. I, I just walk up on the side of him. I'm like, hey, man. I said, hey, man, what you, uh, what you still doing here, man? You better get up out of town. This is like Monday or something. I'm like, man, you better get up out of town. He turned around and looked like, oh, man. He's like, man, you funny, man. I swear to God, on everything I love, he said, man, you funny, man. He said, man, hey, and you got that look, man. This is like 2002, three. He was like, man, you got that look. He was like, man, give me your number, man. Give me your number. I'm going to call you, man. I wrote my number down on a piece of paper. Swear to God, my sister called me. I was teaching in high school at the time. My sister called me like, yo, uh, what's up? Mike Epps just called the house. And I got it on the answering machine too. Yeah, and I'm going downtown to see him. He downtown. I'm going to see him. He said I can come down there and see him. And I'm like, what? I left school, had the tape. I used to play the tape. Mike Epps was on the motherfucker. Tomorrow. So, yeah, man. But your brother though, man, that nigga funny, man. Your brother funny, man. They ain't got that look. Do you know I played that tape every day to niggas, and I wasn't even close to doing comedy. I'm like, yeah, Mike Epps said I'm funny, nigga. That nigga don't know to this day that he he said that, bro. Like. I called him. He, I talked. He called me. I talked to him. He's like, "Yeah, man, you, you in the late?" Like, nah. He, he, I ain't even talk about comedy, bro. He just said, "You funny, man." And you, you, man, you got. But do he know you now? He knows me now. Yeah. He knows he me. Don't now. know because I'm gonna tag his ass in this clip. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm tag him. No, straight up, bro. Yeah, he knows me, bro. And I see him. I, you know, you don't just run up on people talking about shit 20, 15 right. years ago, right. but. It's ironic that me and him have some sort of relationship as far as at least in passing and with something cool. I've been on the road with him a couple of times, so wow. yeah, that's crazy. Just the, 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 the work. work. Yeah, yeah. Talk, man. It's, 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 and that's what I was about to say. It's the law of attraction. Somebody right. can drop one thing in you that grows yeah. and becomes something. That's what um. My bad. No, what was you about? I was gonna say that's so true. I didn't, you was a teacher. 
I used to teach in high school, yeah, middle school. I was a teacher. You are the teacher too, okay. My, my wife's a teacher. So, what I was going to say is, people that's underpaid that don't get the recognition, man, are teachers. Because it was a teacher that saw the comedy in me. Really? I'm just a funny kid, because I was like the class clown. Yeah. I'm one of the most humorous in elementary and high school. Um, <laughs> and, and, Word, and, and, that's and, crazy. And, and, I, and I won, I won most no. likely to be in a movie uh, mm-hmm. in uh, middle school. So, hey. but But the thing was... If it wasn't for that teacher, who knows? It was a teacher my fifth grade year. Was mm-hmm. like, Justin, you're funny. I think you're so funny. I want you to host the um the like the music, the the winter concert. And I was like, what? You want me to host it? She saw something in me that I did it. And I think a lot of people kind of take for granted, or or like teachers don't really get the acknowledgement that they no, deserve. No, no, no. How influential they are right. in a kid's life, and they never will because. They love to do it. You know, teachers can take advantage of all the time because you got to be, a, you got to want to teach. Right. For the most part, you're a special type of person that want to be able to put into kids. No one would be anything without teachers. There would be no doctors. There would be no lawyers. There would be no people that do gym. These are teachers that did this. Shout out to Miss D. That was my favorite teacher. Miss D. Miss D. She sounded like she had a fat ass. <laughs> no, Miss D. Oh, she did, but <laughs> everything else too. Like, oh, she, she was a big girl. Miss D. Oh, was a big man. Why you taught me? You know you taught me a little bit. Shut you up. did. <laughs> Beautiful. And I used to be in class. Me and my best friend Gary Lane. We used to be in class cutting up. And Miss D. When and she would always just be like, you know, like y'all. Like, like, sit down or after class. Y'all just stay in this class. Listen, and she always just give us that extra talk. Then she was volunteering at the community center that we went to all the time. So then we would go spend a lot of time with her, and she would just always instill like, "You got, you're beautiful. You're this. You're talented. You're this. You're that." Mm-hmm. So Miss D is the teacher to this day that always I will just have to say, "Yo, she is one of the reasons why I am who I am because of the lessons she instilled in me." And it wasn't even nothing about you're going to be entertaining. Be she just always just said, you have something special. You're, you're beautiful. Mm-hmm. You're good. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just stay out of trouble. You know, because she knew I wasn't a trouble kid. She just knew I used to cut up. Just That's all of us. We, we can help it. You yeah. know what I mean? And she just gave me that special love and attention, man. Yeah. That was that was needed, man. So shout out to her. You know I have a Mr. I have a teacher. Uh, he was my art teacher, Mr. Roberts. And he, I happened to take art, photography. Every year I would take something where I could have Mr. Robinson, he literally just passed away a couple months ago. The greatest black man, black teacher, every student loved him, but he ain't play. He had these tennis balls and he would hit you if you would act up. And I mean, y'all, you would have thought I was being so Serena. Every time I turn around, it was a tennis ball hitting me because I was always doing something. Yeah. You know, when you're an artist or when you're a, a, a comedian or a kid or, you know, I used to say to my mom, you, you used to get you know, mad or offended, but this was just who we were. Who we we didn't we were, we didn't mean to entertain the class while the teacher was teaching. Is this right. something that we right. were born to do? You know what I'm saying? Not many of us get to tap into who we really are. But he really he he let me. He taught me how to draw. He told me how good I was, just like your teacher did. He just was just like you are phenomenal. You're your star. Like he told me this at a young age. You know what I want to say to you? <clears throat> what? You ba- you baked us pies. I do. <laughs> and people may not know that. Anybody watching and listening, she I literally she baked know. us pies. And you know, I told Lee before you got here, I said, you know what I respect about John C. She is a genuine big girl. Yeah, no. <laughs> no, no. I hope she don't big try to girl hide it. Yeah, you no. are a, a, like you love food so much that you cook it, you bake it no. before you got here. See, I don't I don't respect this morning I woke up early Ooh. to bake y'all these pies. That's amazing. That's I'm gonna take one with me. Too. When I when I saw who I was doing the show with, I was like, let me bake my bro some pies. You know what I'm saying? This morning. I last night I made C P and Peach Cobbler. <laughs> I saw that and I'm gonna let you know this actually Peach Cobbler is my favorite. So you have to then you gonna get then y'all gonna get Peach Cobbler. But I like I like some potatoes. Man. Because <laughs> no, I've got to go on the town tomorrow. But nice. no, nah, it's just, I'm genuinely, authentically a big girl. Proud of it. I can lose weight whenever I want, and I have, and I will. Whenever I feel like I'm getting too big, I know how to scale back. But I genuinely adore myself and who I am. And I'm just, I practice every day to be a good person, period. Mm. That is something that you have to be conscious of, especially in this business. We got, I just read y'all a, a text message somebody sent for no reason to my inbox. We have to 
genuinely make a decision every day just to be a great person. Hey, you said one of the most disrespectful but honest things someone has ever said to me. It was in the belly room one time. I think I may bump you or bump somebody. I don't know. I don't know how to lie. I don't know what happened. You bumping niggas. Oh, yeah, uh, I mean, you know. Yeah. You bump me. I bought, I bought you. She said, you ain't that famous. <laughs> but it was so true. It's true, though. I was like, I mean, you're right. No, but that's not it. You bought me. Famous now. You bought me and did not speak. See, I have oh. a problem. Oh, I didn't speak. You bought your little butt by me, hit me, and didn't even say hello. That's when I was like, hey, Justin, you're not that. You need to relax. You what you mean? What you mean? Like, I like tapped you? What okay, I did? You, you, I was standing there, and you was walking by. But they had called my name. I, no, no, no. Okay. No, this was, no. I'm about to say, was that in no, the zone now? No, no, no. I want to walk this way. I know. No, no. You were walking no. in, and you literally was about to walk your little butt by me and not even say hello. And I'm like, I'm like, hey, Justin, you ain't, you got to calm down now. Now, I know you got your TV shows and all, and I'm happy, but you ain't that famous. Relax. Like, I might have been. I've been thinking about shit. I don't know what I was thinking about. I, I feel like that about all of us. Like, I, I, I have a problem with Fame. The word fame. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I have a problem. It's very with it. diluted now. Well, that's that's, that's, yeah, that's not it. I just have a problem with people thinking they're better than the next human. Period. But I believe that that's the perception too, and I like that you said that. Yeah. But it's how you see people. Remember what I asked you earlier? That's true. Because I remember one time. I mean, like, it's just like it's the way you perceive. Like I feel like don't nobody hate me, bro. Right. And if they right. do, that's their business. Right. right. So that's their business. Right. Because, Straight up. Because if I. Just imagine the way I move around. If I had a mindset, and I'm not saying this is what you're saying just here, but if I had the mindset, you know what? These motherfuckers hating on me. Or them motherfuckers jealous of me. Well, automatically, my body's going to take shape and form to that. So yes, I'm going to show up, and I'm going to... Yeah. I'm going to, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to act a certain way because I... How do you treat a person that you think hates you? Right. Right? How do you treat a person that you think jealous of you? So, you know what? Everybody loves me because you respect me. Right. So as far as I'm, I'm going to call that love. And then I'm going to see you so I can continue to keep my energy at a high level. Like you know that. what I'm Bro, saying? I, I, boy, I, I love... That's a bar. That's, yeah. that's, I, I, I love that. Now... Playing devil's advocate. Okay. But I, I love everything you just exactly. said. And I love yeah, playing devil's advocate. I mean, you know, that's what makes the podcast spicy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we all just agree about shit. That's but, one friend. No, but, but, but I also feel when you start to reach certain levels yes. is when you experience more hate. Yeah. And sometimes until you get to a certain see, ain't nobody seen Kevin Tate star on the show yet. Mm -hmm. Right. You ain't reached that, you ain't reached right. those eyes. Right. Let me tell you what you can reach, what you read, energy. Right, yeah. Mm -hmm. So you could be in a room with somebody, and you could be like, "That's fair." Right. No, that's yeah. fair okay. now. Uh, okay, that's fair now. Right. Exactly. But that being said, so that's what I was thinking about when you were saying that. I was like, "No one hates you. You may not feel like nobody hates you. Yeah. I'm sure, somebody hates you. I'm actually. sure. But yeah. I love the way that you 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 got to look. You got to have blinders. Yeah. You got to have the eyes. Of you, God. Have, you got to have blinders. <laughs> but to what you're saying now, you can't tell me that you dislike me and still get my energy you right. can't tell me that <laughs> i'm right. not that right. nigga like you right. can't yeah, yeah, yeah. you can't shit on me and do some shit and just play me and i'm gonna keep showing up with pies and shit that ain't gonna happen bro. <laughs> you know what i'm saying like i'm not doing that but if i don't know i'm not gonna carry this because i've done it before right. i've already been there before right. i already thought right. when i yeah. first started doing comedy I, i'm like man these niggas man these motherfuckers man these niggas you know that's me i'm out here by myself yeah. i don't know i'm and i said you know i had to rearrange that thinking because I won't fuck with nobody if I think yeah. don't nobody fuck with you me. You ain't do that to me and Bug, because, you know, no. me, me and Bug responsible no. for where you at anyway, for your <laughs> funny. Ah, me, and Boog, me and Boogie responsible for, for Justin and you, because we used to put y'all niggas but, on all our shit. No, 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 no shade. Boy, that's why I fuck with y'all to this day. I <laughs> always fuck with Trey and Boogie, bro, because they used to put me up early yeah. on, bro. They I did, though. Bro. I, what they don't know is I used to drive, bro, to Long Beach. I used to be doing comedy in Long, Long Beach because I went out, but I remember when I met, first of all, when I met y'all niggas, I thought y'all was famous. Let's just start there. Right. I, Please I don't would, tell Trey that. Because no, no, because let me tell you why. They was doing comedy in D.C. They was yeah. doing, I had oh, never, yeah, yeah. I snuck on the stage, but I was out here, I just said, man, I'm about to pick up a microphone. So when I seen them niggas knew how to do it already, <laughs> I'm like, oh shit, but I had been, I used to go down to Long Beach and do little pubs and shit. Yeah. By the time I got to y'all, bro, I thought them was, Big shows. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all don't even. All right, man. Whatever. They was right, big man. shows. To me, them was funny. huge shows, man. It'd be a restaurant, motherfucker yeah, cooking and shit. But I, I, he always when, did show love. When we, when we talk about someone that made me step it up, I mean, talk about you see a comedian that make you. I remember the first time I seen Boogie B perform. 
And at this time in my, I was like maybe four years in uh -huh. and I was getting standing ovations a yeah. lot, right? Mm -hmm. But that's cause I was doing like the same 10 minutes, yeah. right? But I remember we was at some little hole in the wall spot, but it was packed. And Boogie B went up, he had, he had probably just got out here. And this yeah. motherfucker yeah. moving around, <laughs> oh, was moving around the and this, this dude destroyed. And yeah. I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, that was funny. I, I, like, I got to step my shit. I went up and had a great set that night. Yeah. But I remember watching him that night. I was like, oh, I got to step. I was like, who is this yeah. young, this new nigga yeah. around yeah. here on yeah. the scene? Wow. But yeah. I would go on record Shout to say to comedians from, I haven't, I, I swear, I've never seen a comedian that wasn't funny from Detroit, Chicago, or D.C. Yeah, them three Facts. cities. I'm telling you, you got to, Facts. those cities, I, these people go through real shit. <laughs> they don't have time to hear about paper straws. These <laughs> niggas, these niggas want some truth. They want some animation. They want yeah. a little fighting. That's why you see Red Grant dancing all over the stage and Donnell yeah. and all them. We had to really, in D.C., they groom real comedy. You got to really be funny yeah. to nah, that's do true. comedy out there. Yeah, DC made me. DC man. will D make D you D work. DC honed the shit out of me, and I met Bug when I, I was already living in DC. I moved to DC in '03. I met Bug in like '04 or '05, and Bug was stinking it up because <laughs> he just started. <laughs> right, right. And then me and Bug just linked up, and from that first day that we linked, I was like, "Yo, you got to do it." Bud looked at me like how you looked at me and Bud. Because oh, yeah. I was kind of, I had had that hot, at this time, a hot 10. Okay. <laughs> you better so 10 on these. So the hot 10, <laughs> Bud was like, oh. 10 on these. Bud things. was like, yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? And I, I gave him the little hot 10 minute advice that I had in me. <laughs> hey, let me tell you, brother. You gotta, <laughs> word up. And we got, and we just clicked up, man. And from that day forward, you know what I mean? The rest is history as far as our relationship. But there's been plenty of nights when Bug, I'd be like, all right, you know, me and Bug, Bug made me step up. Or I would make Bug step right. up. You know what I mean? Because me and Bug got two different styles. Right. You know what I mean? But we would always make each other step our Which game Which makes y'all so great as a team. You know, yeah. that's what that's I love. That's how about Kanisha and I are. Yeah. 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 Y'all both got big breasts. No, nah. <laughs> but the fun, the funny thing is, Kanisha and I's breasts are the exact same size. She actually just Shows pushes them. hers up, and I keep mine in. So mine's actually look smaller, but we have the same exact. Yeah, right. Right. Hey, we, we we about to get out of here, uh, but this this <laughs> something this something. I know. I'm talking about titties. We, we about to wrap this up, but um, not because of your titties. Uh, Thank shout you out, so shout much. Out to those. Um, <laughs> just so we started so late because of what was happening. Um. This is what I wanted to ask you before we go. How hard is it? Do you face any difficulties being a big black woman in entertainment and comedy? I want I want to say this. Um, I think it's hard being a female, period, in any industry, anything you do, period. But I think being big and being being big and being dark skin dark also. Dark skin, that's what I meant. Yeah, also, that's yeah. kind of that would be two strikes on a normal person. The thing is. Before I was a big girl, I was always dark skinned. So my mom, I came out the darkest out of the six children. And my mother's light. She's a little lighter than you, Justin. Wow. And she pumped all this confidence in me when I was like Bean's age. Kanisha's daughter's age is really young. Like you're really, you're black and you're beautiful. And no matter what anybody says, you can do whatever you want to do. You're black and you're beautiful. And I would hear this over and over again as a child growing up. So when that confidence is pumped in you, it, nobody can say or do anything to let me not know that I am not black and, and beautiful. Mm. That's no, good. no matter how big. And I, and I tell people that all the time. Pump that confidence in your children because other people are going to always try to deter or put whatever their fears are on you. Right. But as far as being in the industry and all that, no, it doesn't. It None of this phases me. And I also talk to other females in the game like, you know, you, you got to stop looking at what you may think they're looking at. You know, who cares? How do you right. feel about yourself? It's how I feel. Like, you can't. No, I am her. I am the big black girl. I am, I, and not arrogantly, but I am probably one of the funniest fucking comedians out, period. Mm. And I'm not saying that, saying that there's not many of them, but I'm just saying that the confidence in me, let's go. It, it don't matter yes. if I get big, if I get small, no matter what happens, I'm great because this is what I choose to look at when I look in the mirror. Mm. So this industry can't, it can't bring me down. I only, I only will be able to rise in this industry. I period. That. Plus that's what I believe also. Respect. And, and also Trey, 
Kevin, Justin, it's also being great. What you put into the universe, you're going to get it back. Fact. So just be good to people. God does the elevating. Yeah. All right. Nah, that's why. True. That's why when you when one show drop, you picked another one up. Oh yeah. Because this was God's decision, not not the, man. The yeah. man, the TV, the thing. This this ain't their decisions on what we do. Right. right. If you keep being great, God gonna keep on shining your light because He needs your light in the world. This Ooh. is why he made us funny. It, it's a scripture. Here I go, being oh, preacher John said. Here we go, Reverend John he is. It's a scripture in the Bible that says laughter is healing. God has given us permission to heal people. Mm. When we go into them rooms for real, he's basically like, it's somebody in here hurting. And think about all the people that come up to us. Have y'all ever got the, I was going to kill myself, but, you know, people, we get to heal. Hopefully tonight. Right. <laughs> Look. We, why you give John C the last question? Yeah. You gotta yeah. Go? <laughs> I got one more thing and then we can go. I got one more thing, then we can go. This is what people don't understand about us as comedians, as artists, or whatever. We get to. We don't have to. We get to perform. We get to heal. We don't have to do anything. So the fact that we got to, I got these bills, I gotta get paid. I'm just saying the fact that we get to do this, that's God saying, yo, do me a favor. Get, 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 do me a favor. Heal my people. Nah, that's so I can't let my size and complexion and all that get in the way of what God built me to do. Be great, nah, man. Be great, and it's <laughs> and on and on that note. Yes. <laughs> and on, only, on, on those on notes. What y'all got, man? What y'all social media? Anything y'all uh, got? Y'all want to plug? Uh, yeah. Uh, follow my social media. Kevin Tate is K E V I N T A T E I S. Also, check me out on the Zodiac Show, eight thirty every night Pacific Coast time. Hey, I promise you nothing but a vibe. And then also my podcast. I could be right. Uh, make sure y'all pop in on that. And uh, lastly, Arlington. Arlington Improv. I'll be there July 11th through 13th, man. Pull up. Yo, you can uh, follow me on my social media. I just hit the over 10,000 follower threshold, that, man. man. That was that. a big deal for me. Shout out to that. <laughs> you know, it ain't a big deal to a lot of people, but to me it is. It's comedian Trey Elliott, T-R-E-Y-E-L-L-I-O-T. Watch me on episode six, season two of Hacks on HBO Max. And uh, all the uh, laugh mob laugh tracks on HBO Max, and uh, yeah, you can catch me on the Rock the Mic tour with Tony Rock. We come to a city near you. I don't know when this is gonna air, but we in Vegas this weekend for Father's Day, and then we got uh, the Funny Bone in Richmond, Virginia, July first through the third. But just follow my social media; you see all my other dates. Um, I'm John C. It's real easy. J O N C E A underscore on um instagram i bought half my followers i don't know why y'all working so hard for that but anyway um we i got a cooking show you can go straight to own put in a holiday food fight i won a cooking competition and we are working on a spinoff show of that of just me cooking so i'm excited about that keep that in prayer that's one of the things lined up we got some shows in seattle this weekend i'm on uh a little this, come, this coming out by two, three weeks. That show is over. <laughs> oh, well, well, <laughs> never mind. Um, look for look, look for Kanisha and I on all deaf digital. Also, we are coming to a city near you. And I mean, I I, I I'm all over, man. Just 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 look for me. Google me. J O N C E A. No, I'm playing. <laughs> hey, no, Google her. Hey man, I want to give a shout out to, to my uh terrific. Uh, phenomenal uh, guest today, man. Um, yeah, make sure y'all like, uh, subscribe, comment, and share. Make sure you share, share the podcast if yes. you're enjoying it. Uh, and if anybody has been offended by anything that was said today, just remember one thing fuck, fuck your, your feelings. feelings. <laughs> <laughs> I, down, I get it. Hate that I keep winning. Stab my back is tempting.